You know what it is. That's right. It's time to talk money with your money nerd and financial coach. Now, tighten those purse strings and open those ears. It's the Money Talk with Tiff podcast. Hey, everyone. I am very excited because I have one of my cousins on the line now. Of course, not my real cousins, y'all, but um, I have Stephen Stack and Stephen is a millionaire and I wanted to have him on the show so he can kind of tell us his story, how he got there. And that way it can inspire someone else that's listening because it's a very inspiring story. So, hey, Stephen, how are you? Hey, what's going on, cousin? How you feeling? (laughs) <laughs> I'm doing good. <laughs> Come on in the room. Um, <laughs> but um, let's hop right in for the audience. Let's just start at the very, very beginning. Let's jog the memory for a little bit. When you first decided, you know what, Stephen, it's time. Um, <laughs> what did that decision look like? Like, what was your thought process when you decided to get your money in order? So, Phenomenal question. And for me, it actually started a lot earlier than what people would think. So I can remember my, my dad was an entrepreneur. Uh, he actually actually still is to this day has a furniture reupholstery business. And oh, nice. yeah, and um, he I would watch him do his work, do it diligently. And he loved the work that he did. And one of the things that I would see from my folks is that they were savers. My my parents were savers. And I remember being in college. So I'll fast forward beyond grade school to college where I was doing the math. I was looking at these certificate of deposits and and just saying like, man, these rates really aren't hitting like that. Um, and, uh, and they're still not right, 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 (laughs) right, right, right. And I just realized really quickly, I'm not going to be able to save my way to wealth. And I'm like, I know I have to invest, even though I didn't really know a lot about how to. Uh, whether it was, you know, the stock market or real estate, I just knew I needed to get greater returns uh, than the stuff that I knew as far as savings accounts and CDs. So I just knew I needed to do something different. Gotcha. Gotcha. And just for the audience really quick, uh, certificates of deposits are um, when you can put your money in the bank and you have to keep it there for a certain amount of time. You know, sometimes it's one year, five years, 10 years, whatever. And you get a certain percentage on that money. Now, as we just mentioned, it's not that much, um, (laughs) but you know, there are people that do a strategy where they stack them and so on and so, so forth. But I just wanted to set that baseline of education for the audience. Now, getting back to your story though, um, you were like, this is not it. Like, there's no way that I can retire off of CDs. Like my parents are putting these in the bank. So what can I do differently? So how did you learn about the stock market or how did you decide this is what I want to invest in? So my first introduction to the stock market was actually right after I graduated from college. So I studied engineering and I got a role, an engineering role at a, at a corporate gig, and they started talking about this thing called a, a 401k. Uh, that was my first real introduction to stuff like that. No one really sat down with me on it, uh, but I just dove in and said, OK, well, let me just kind of pick some of these different funds that they had in there. And for those who are listening, I went like 90 percent. And this this is exactly what I did when I started off. So, you know, I'm in my early 20s, 90 percent towards these different kind of like funds. So think like a a big basket of stocks all bundled together into one. And then I did 10 percent in company stock for the company that I was working for. But that was my intro to the stock market because I just started from college uh, my nicest possession was a futon. 
Um, <laughs> so I'm like, hey, I don't need a ton of money for things for life. Uh, so I was crazy enough to say, hey, I'm just going to put as much money as they'll allow me to withdraw from my paycheck into this 401k and just figure out living with what's left. Plus, there was this thing called the Great Recession that was going on at that time. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, hey, if things are as bad as what they're saying it is, maybe I'm buying these things at a really good deal. Mm. So that was my thought process. Mm, interesting. So that's very interesting because that is not the norm. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> And let me just preface, let me just say to the audience, um, anything you hear here is not investment advice. We're just giving you education, entertainment. Um, so take it as it is, do your own research. <laughs> but I will say. <laughs> she had to get that disclaimer in. <laughs> I had to because I don't want people like, well, I heard on Money Talk with Tiff. I need to do 90 percent. Right, 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 right. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but all jokes aside, though, um, you went into that 401k and you said, I'm just going to go in. I'm going to go hard. I'm going to just max this thing out. I'm going to do it um, with most all stocks, it sounds like. Um, I don't see any bonds in there. Um, And so it was very aggressive. And um, usually, you know, when I'm looking at people, um, especially when I was in HR, people kind of bypass the whole 401k thing, even when there's a match. And so to hear you say that this was your first entry into 401ks and investing. And you're like, I just want to jump, you know, feet first, head first (laughs) into this um, is very different. And in a time where the stock market was taking. And so I want to kind of stay on that for a little bit because you did the exact opposite of what people were doing. And so how did that work out for you? So, you all will love this. I was actually inspired by a Denzel movie. That's what <laughs> helped me get in. Um, so there's a movie called Inside Man. And ah, mm-hmm. there's like a random line in the movie uh, from Inside Man. This movie came out in like 06. So it was before the Great Recession. But I remember there was just a random line in the movie where one of the characters said, when there's blood in the streets, buy property. Mm. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Now, I don't even remember the full plot of the movie uh, at this point. Uh, Well, I don't want to spoil it. I do remember some stuff. But uh, (laughs) I remember that line from the movie. And I'm like, man, that's really interesting. And I started to just kind of dig into that thought and it made sense. It's like, okay, well, if I'm shopping for clothes or shoes or, you know, uh, whatever it may be, when stuff is at a discount, people are excited to buy it because you still are buying quality items. It's just you're getting it at a discount. And so I'm like, okay, well, it seems like this concept makes the same type of sense with the stock market, but people's psychology around it is to do the opposite. When things are down, Mm -hmm. people are trying to get out of the market instead of rushing into it to get these discounts. So it was really inspired by a Denzel movie. And I did not know that, y'all. Uh, <laughs> so this is meant to me. But see how just one little quote and one little movie <laughs> can set your whole trajectory. Um, but that's amazing. That's awesome. And, you know, to have the forethought and say, hmm, let me not do what everybody else is doing. Let me do something different. Um, and, these things like to have that thought process, especially when this is the first time you're ever in the market and you're like, this is a sale. Like (laughs) usually, um, usually it's the seasoned investors that think that way. Um, not new investors. Right. Right. And so I just want to drill that point into the audience too. Like 
whenever you see the market go down, you're getting these things at a great price because history tells us that the market will always go up, right? Um, and so even if it has a little dip, it's still going to do better than it did um, before. And so to lead that in to your story, you know, you got in 2008, 2009. We know now that, <laughs> you know, the market has recovered and then some, you know, tremendously since then. And so how did that play a role? Like, did you ever think, let me go ahead and pull, pull the money out? Or, you know, did you just always think, this is going to be a long-term investment for me. Yeah. So it, it was always a long-term mindset. And mm -hmm. so like, just to give perspective, so my parents are, uh, they're a good bit older. And so they both grew up on farms and I'm, incredibly thankful for that because they just have more of a patient mentality and mindset for life of just, Hey, things take time. Like the time for harvest isn't right after you've planted. Mm -hmm. And so like that kind of thought process was always there for me. And just to give people perspective, like growing up for me, it was, you'd wash clothes and then you'd put them on a clothesline outside to dry mm -hmm. versus putting it in the dryer. So for those that can relate to that, it takes time. Now, you know, as a kid, we had to run out if it was raining, you know, and try to get the clothes <laughs> before they got drenched. Um, but I'm saying these things, trying to relate it to just regular life stuff to say that, the most of the things that are of incredible value take time and investing is not an exception. And what you were saying earlier, Tiffany, about the market, just it, historically, it has shown that it always goes up. And I would add to that over time, mm -hmm. over the long haul, which I know that's what you meant, but that was my mentality. And I remember when I turned, I was around 25 years old, that I actually wanted to make a plan to be quote unquote retireable by age 45. Um, and uh, obviously things happen quicker than what I anticipated. Uh, but the thought process was always long term big picture. Uh, and at that time, you know, me saying retire a bowl, like there wasn't things like fire, financially independent, retire early. Mm -hmm. Like you, we didn't have that kind of terminology. Um, but long haul for sure it was, was always my thought process and still is. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I wanted to make sure we stay on that because a lot of interactions that I have with people, you know, it's always about the fast money. It's like, you know, you mean to tell me I have to put in and wait like years <laughs> in order to see a return <laughs> versus me, you know, getting into this quick, get rich quick, you know, type of situation. <laughs> um, and unfortunately we kind of shoot ourselves in the foot when we do that, because like you said, anything worth having will take time. Right, right? Right. Um, and so that's why I wanted people to see like you can build wealth by investing for the long term. It's completely possible. I'm, I was going to say millions of people do it. I don't know exactly <laughs> how many people do it, but people are like, there's real life millionaires out here that this is how the main reason they have their millions. Like when I used to work in that industry, um, dealing with high net worth individuals, most of them got it through their 401k or mm -hmm. <laughs> through investing for the long term. And so it's completely possible. And I wanted to share your story with the audience for that reason. So they can see a real life example, like you're walking, talking, you know, <laughs> out here in these streets and you did it. So now let's fast forward to today. Okay. 
how did that work out for you? <laughs> um, you, know, uh, you know, the 2008, 2009, you went hard, you maxed out 401ks, you stayed in for the long haul. Um, if you can give us, and I know I didn't prep you on this, oh, so just okay. roundabout numbers. We keep it real um, over here. Or, That's how we do it. Right. <laughs> Just roundabout, and we can go percentages, sure. like how much did your money grow since then? Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> I haven't actually put the math together on it. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, we're talking, oh, geez. I mean, I know it's a multiple for sure um, to like give people perspective. So I put money in the stock market. I also started buying foreclosed real estate investment properties at that time. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I would easily say that there were things that we're talking five, six X types of things. Um, Or if I'm talking about my dollars from the beginning, uh, (laughs) well over 10 X, well over 10 X. Now, the thing is, I wasn't putting tons of money away at that point. You know, I was only but making so much at that time, too. But um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's uh, you've made me want to actually sit down and do the math now uh, and figure that out. Um, But yeah, it it definitely was significant, uh, the growth over time. And it actually happened a lot faster than what I thought it would, because, again, I was doing the 401k stuff, real estate. I was also doing stock market investing outside of my 401k as well, of looking at things like Roth IRAs. I've uh, fully funded Roth IRAs for well over a decade. Um, I've done like taxable brokerage accounts, health savings accounts, um, like a bunch of different ones. I've I've got uh, one of my nephews actually opened a custodial account for him. Um, that I invest in as well as he'll take some of his birthday monies and monies he'll get from chores from his uh, mom, my sister, and I'll invest it uh, for him on his behalf. So there's a lot of different avenues of the investing that I do today and some non-traditional stuff too. And so what I heard from all of that is diversification. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. You have quite a bit of different types of accounts, you know, taxable, non-taxable, you know, other things that aren't the stock market that you're investing in. And I feel like that is a great way to go real estate, you know, Um, just having a lot of different buckets that you can pull from when the time comes. So like, you know, a lot of people get a little, you know, uh, if <laughs> when it comes to investing in retirement accounts, but mind you, that can only be one piece of the puzzle. You know what I'm right. saying? Um, you don't have to put everything in there, but I will say, you know, nobody wants to work forever. And so <laughs> you might as well take advantage of the tax savings. But um, all of that to say, I heard you say diversification. You have different pots that you can pull from if you ever need to. You have different pots growing at the same time. And to me, that is definitely the way to go. Um, I'm similar. Mm-hmm. You know, I have retirement account. I have a Roth retirement account. I have 529 accounts for my kids. I have um, taxable brokerage accounts, yeah. you know, yeah. that type of thing. And the reason you want to have a strategy like that is because when retirement does come, right? You want to make sure you're the most tax efficient as possible. And you may have to pull it, pull from different buckets to replace your income, but lower your tax burden, you Mm -hmm. know? So we're always thinking long-term and that's kind of what I want to get over to the audience as well. Like have a long-term view of life. Like I know it's difficult sometimes when, you know, maybe you're barely putting food on the table or, you know, things of that nature, but try to have that long-term purview, even if, you know, you have to deal with short-term issues, you know (laughs) what I mean? Um, And that's why, you know, looking at your story and just thinking about how you said, I just went all in with the the 401k and I don't care how I have to live. Um, (laughs) I'm going to just put everything in there. Um, Like I said, that's very unique. You know, people are like, 
looking at their paycheck like I can't afford (laughs) to put money into a 401k. So really, you'll be surprised that it's not really a dollar for dollar investment that you're making because your tax burden will decrease. So they're taking less taxes out of your account. So I say all of this to say. Just try it. <laughs> Just try it. Um, if you have access to a 401k, you have access to a match, you can always, you know, increase, decrease how much you're putting in from your check. Right. So just try putting in up to the match and then see if you can, you know, make ends meet or what have you. I can I'm not going to guarantee, but <laughs> <laughs> I can almost guarantee that you might not miss that money. Right. (laughs) Um, and so I just wanted to put that out there. Like you took a totally different approach to money, wealth building. Um, when everybody was running, you're like, I'm diving head first. You were like, I don't care, you know, how I have to live. If I have to have beans and rice, rice and beans, (laughs) (laughs) I am going to invest. Um, and it paid off tremendously for you. So I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story with us here today. Now, if people were interested in finding out more about you or following you or whatever, you know, if they're like, I want to know more about Stephen, <laughs> how could they find you? So one simple way, I have a website. It's just Stephen with a V, S-T-E-V-E-N-L stack, S-T-A-C-K dot com. So Stephen L stack dot com. That's one way. Um, another, I'm probably most active on Instagram. My handle for that is at stacking with stack. So stacking with stack. Um, it's the same for Facebook, uh, for Twitter it's, it's just Stephen L stack. Uh, but, but yeah, you can reach out or try to connect with me in that way. I am fairly responsive to people. I do actually uh, monitor that and just try to encourage people around wealth in all its facets. So I know we talk about money, but also thinking about things like health and just how you relate to others, family wise, friend wise, you know, so on and so forth, that it all really works together in concert uh, to get you to where you want to be. And y'all, he is so serious about that because homeboy stay in the gym. Uh, <laughs> no, but all jokes aside, um, <laughs> thank you so much. And if you all did not catch all of that, don't worry because I will have it in the show notes. So check that out and follow Stack. I follow Stack. You should follow Stack. He's always dropping gems. And I appreciate you coming on and sharing with my podcast audience um, more about you and your story. So that way we can inspire someone else. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Truly. Thank you so much for having me. This was a blast. We got to do it again. (laughs) For sure. For sure. (laughs) All right. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Thank you for listening, joining, and being a part of the Money Talk with Tiff podcast this week. You can check Tiff out every Thursday for a new Money Talk podcast. But if you just can't wait until next week, you can listen to previous podcast episodes at moneytalkwitht.com or follow Tiff on all social media platforms at Money Talk with T. Until next time, spend wise by spending less than you make. A word to the money wise is always sufficient.